They will be LAW law. There's no way that uh, GST will ever be part of our policy. Never, ever. Never, ever. It's dead. Tax promises and breaking them are things that the voters and the media most remember about politicians and governments. That's one reason why governments like to spread them out over many years. It tends to trap their opponents, as the Morrison government did in 2019 with a three-stage tax plan. Tonight, the Parliament of Australia voted to reward aspiration. We won't oppose the full package uh, if it comes to the Senate unamended because our highest priority is to make sure that Australians do receive that tax cut next week. Labor ultimately pledged at the 2022 election to keep the Stage 3 tax cuts. And ever since, the Prime Minister has insisted that he wasn't going to break his promise. Well, they are legislated, and one of the things that people have a right uh, to believe is that when a politician makes a commitment before an election, they keep it. And I intend to do just that. But the economy and the government's fortunes have changed. And today, confirmation that so has its tax policy. And the policy that I will be taking to the party room this afternoon is aimed squarely at middle Australia, but it's also aimed at good economic policy. If there was ever ever a breach of promise that's the mother of all broken promises, this is it. The revamped plan will mean taxpayers earning up to $150,000 will be better off, while those earning more than $150,000 will receive cuts up to half the size originally promised. My job is to respond, to seek advice and then to make a difference, to make the right decision, not the easy decision. Treasurer, thanks for joining us tonight. We won't officially know until tomorrow what the government's proposed tax package looks like, but we can say now that the pledge to keep the Stage 3 tax cuts is now out the window. That's obviously a huge political call. Why should voters trust the government's promises in the future? Well, we have changed our view, and we've changed our view because we found a better way to provide more cost of living relief to more people in a way that doesn't add to inflation. Uh, and so the proposal that the Prime Minister will put forward tomorrow uh, means uh, more help for more people, it means a tax cut for every taxpaying worker, and it will be better for middle Australia, better for cost of living pressures, better for women and workforce participation, uh, better for nurses and teachers and truckies, and as the Treasury analysis that I release tomorrow will show, it will be better for the economy as well. But you have given a lot of uh, ammunition to the opposition uh, just on the question of the lie, though, haven't you? The deputy opposition leader says the election was won on a lie. Well, I think whether it's the deputy opposition leader or Peter Dutton or Angus Taylor, they always want to play the kind of nasty, negative politics uh, that they are familiar with. Uh, this is not about politics. This is about uh, helping people with cost of living pressures in a more effective way. It's about providing uh, bigger tax cuts for more people to help them deal with the cost of living. And as I understand it, the Deputy Opposition Leader said today that if they are elected, they will unwind these changes. That means the Liberals and Nationals are going to the election with a policy to increase taxes on middle Australia in order to fund even bigger tax cuts for people on the highest incomes. Well, what finally uh, brought you to a change of mind on this? I mean, the economy's changed, uh, the, the outlook for inflation's changed, the cost of living pressures have obviously risen, but what was it that really finally changed your mind? Well, I think people, people do recognise uh, that uh, it's been almost five years now since these tax cuts were legislated by Scott Morrison. Uh, and in that time, we've had a pandemic and a recession, a couple of major conflicts. Uh, but really what's motivating us here is we understand, uh, we have listened, we know that people are under sustained and persistent cost of living pressure. And so this is about middle Australia, it's about helping people deal with these cost of living pressures. We understand that people are under the pump, but we don't just acknowledge that. Tomorrow, when the Prime Minister stands up and announces this important change, we will be doing something about it. Have the uh, changes in economic circumstances like inflation actually changed the way stage three tax cuts would have affected uh, voters or how they would have experienced them? 
Oh, I think certainly different kinds of cost of living pressures impact differently in the community, uh, including, for example, the impact uh, of uh, higher mortgage repayments. And the Treasury analysis that I will release tomorrow uh, alongside the Prime Minister's announcement will make it clear that we've taken that into consideration. You know, one of the reasons why this is squarely about cost of living pressures for everyone, but especially about Middle Australia, is we recognise that people are under pressure. And that's why the tax cuts that the Prime Minister will announce tomorrow and why the Treasury analysis, which backs it up, shows that this is better for the economy because it takes into consideration the cost of living pressures, it takes into consideration uh, the circumstances of middle Australia. It's better for women and for the workforce uh, and it's better for the economy as well. And so I understand, Laura, that people will want to know why we've changed our view. And the simplest answer to that question is we found a better way, a better way for middle Australia, a better way for cost of living and a better way for the economy. Well, when the, first, when the tax cuts were first uh, raised in 2019, the two big issues were their massive cost and the question of equity on stage three. Obviously, the budget's in a better position. Are you still concerned, though, about those costs or is it the fact that the budget is in a better position so that that's not so big a concern for you? Oh, well, we want to provide as much relief as we responsibly can uh, in an affordable and methodical way, and that's what this package is really about. And one of the reasons why uh, the proposal we'll put forward tomorrow is revenue neutral compared to the old Stage 3 tax cuts is because we know from Treasury and from consultations with the Reserve Bank that being revenue neutral is a key reason why we don't expect and they don't expect additional inflationary pressures uh, in the economy as a consequence uh, of the changes uh, that we are making. We have delivered the first surplus in 15 years. Uh, there is a second surplus in prospect, but we're not there yet. We've got the budget in much better nick, but the pressures are still there. And so we didn't want to spend more than the envelope from the old stage three for good reasons, including inflation. We didn't want to spend less because we want to provide the maximum relief we can in a far more effective way, which recognises the pressures right up and down the income scale. What about the equity issue then? Your comments in 2019 certainly suggested you found them inequitable then. Uh, economists are pointing out that uh, there's been a big increase in the number of taxpayers in that top uh, tax bracket. They're entitled to feel a bit unhappy, aren't they? Oh, I don't think so. I think when they see the package tomorrow, uh, people will appreciate that there is a tax cut for all taxpaying workers. Uh, and that is deliberate. You know, we're not in the business of setting people against each other when it comes to these tax changes. We want a tax cut for every taxpaying worker. Uh, there is an emphasis on Middle Australia. And the reason for that simply is because we were able to find a way uh, to make a meaningful difference to all taxpayers rather than a disproportionate benefit uh, for a few taxpayers. Uh, the many will benefit from this rather than the few. That is a motivating factor here, but we found a way to do it in a way where everyone who pays tax and works gets a tax cut under what we're proposing. Well, some of the people who won't benefit are the ones who don't pay tax, whether they're pensioners, people on really low incomes and retirees. Uh, they're also being squeezed. Will there be any cost of living help for them uh, announced by the Prime Minister tomorrow? Well, tomorrow's focus will be on uh, changes to the structure of the tax cuts. Uh, but uh, people on low and fixed incomes have been a, a, a particular focus of the cost of living relief that we're rolling out right now. Cheaper medicines, more bulk billing uh, doctors, energy bill relief. In so many of these ways, we have recognised the pressure on people uh, on low and fixed incomes. Uh, that has been a big part of billions of dollars which are rolling out from the first two budgets. Tomorrow's emphasis is on our working people and especially middle Australia. We'll be speaking with the Woolworth CEO, Brad Banducci, uh, a little later in the program. You're talking to the competition watchdog about a possible inquiry into price gouging. What else do you need to see before you commission an investigation? Oh, I've had some terrific conversations with the chair of the ACCC uh, about the powers that she needs in order to ensure that our supermarkets are as competitive as possible and we get a fair go for families and farmers. Uh, and I hope to say more about that before long. And finally, uh, what do you say to those who say that this is the end of tax reform? I mean, 
Where does the debate go about where tax reform goes next and how we rebalance the system so we're not so reliant on personal income tax? Well, I obviously disagree with that perspective because this is tax reform uh, which is superior to the tax reform that it replaces. Uh, it ticks all of the boxes when it comes to the economy uh, for all of the reasons that I've run through already. You know, by providing uh, a bigger tax cut to more workers uh, to help with the cost of living, uh, we can encourage more people to work, we can take the pressure off people who are uh, under the pump, uh, and we can tick all of the boxes that the Treasury advice that I release tomorrow will indicate. So it's the right kind of tax reform. Uh, it's not an absence of tax reform, it's a superior tax reform to what it replaces. Treasurer, thanks so much for your time tonight. Thanks very much, Laura.